in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Stub Love 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always and respect you. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. And I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Just for this video, I am going to go outside of the norm and attempt, it's, it's very difficult, but I am going to attempt to keep my voice sort of low because I don't want to scare nobody and I don't want to seem threatening. Because <laughs> y'all know how I do it. But I want to send a message to this sister who made a video about why. Is that a word, why? <laughs> La? <laughs> it's a French word, why? I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah. anyway. She made a video about me, this sister called, calling herself Art Ruckus. And I want to say to you, sister, that I don't take your comments, your video, personal. Because you don't know me. And you are only upset with the message. But usually when we get bad news, you know, just like that guy that's serving the subpoena in court, He's just doing his job. He's just delivering the message. He's just the messenger. So I'm just the messenger. Because you don't know me. You ain't got the message. But my time is running out on these videos, so let me get straight to the point. I even took a couple of notes so I make sure that I address everything that I want to very quickly. This system, I feel, is a very confused individual because she is calling me a black racist and there's no such thing as a black racist because in order for you to have a, a black racist you have to have black supremacy. I don't know who recognizes black supremacy or racism. I have never heard the government talk about we have a problem with Black racism or anything, it does not exist. Even in countries that's controlled by black people, you have never heard white people complain about white racism in black countries. It don't exist. But you have those people, because we still continue to have a slave mentality, we accept anything that would help us defend against anything that is negative said about white people. It's the same, we still have the same mentality that we got to do to defend white people. But if you notice, white people don't defend us. They don't. You show me, they don't. When folks get to talking about us and calling us jungle bunnies and all like that, they don't come out the woodwork. But we just got to, we just feel we, we don't defend, we don't defend, uh, Chinese, we don't defend Native Americans, 
But when somebody talks against white people, oh, we, I hate you. That's what this, this sister actually said. I hate you. Oh, my Lord. Just a few days ago, she said she didn't even know what racism was. And just, in, and just recently, now all of a sudden she know what it is. How is that possible? That you increase your knowledge so quickly. This is, this is disturbing. You can't know something, especially a subject like this. Didn't know nothing a few days ago. Now all of a sudden you're an expert? Something is wrong. You call me a racist because you say I don't like white people. You're, and you don't like Michael X because he talk about white people. Your hero is Dr. Martin Luther King. But Dr. Martin Luther King is a racist. You know why? Because his enemy was white people. And Dr. King spoke against the Vietnam War. Who was he speaking to? To stop it. He was speaking to white people. So in your definition... Dr. King, oh, let me tone my voice down. <laughs> I don't want to scare nobody. Dr. King was a racist. And then you have those, well, racism was just was outright then. But if racism still exists, then it's still here. And the one, and the reason why it exists, because you have Caucasian people who still advocating and still behaving in that type of manner. Not at all. I never said all, because that would not be true. And it wasn't true during Martin Luther King's day. But the Caucasian racist people, they were the enemy. So Dr. King was a racist. He didn't call them devil, but he knew who his enemies were. So what you're talking about don't make any sense. I never hurt white people. How many white people have I hung? How many white people did I make a slave? I don't call white people hunky or cracker or devils or anything. You said, you said, I you ain't never heard me call white people devils. You never, you never heard me. I never written what I call white folks names, period. I call them, I say, racist, Caucasian people. Caucasian is the noun. Racist is the adjective. The adjective describes the noun. So it's a specific person that I'm talking about. And if you are not that person, why are you so upset? And why are you so upset? Well, you call me a dark European because I like white more. See, you don't understand what a dark European is. A dark European lives and does not care about his people at all. He's just like the slave. The slave existed just for the benefit of his master. And some of us have a mentality, we don't care about black people at all. We only concern, make sure that white people are happy. They don't come. Don't hurt their white folks feeling they didn't do nothing to you. That's a dark European. But what about us? They don't care nothing about us. That's a dark European. It's so sad also that on her page on this channel, all these little folks that I had run in with, they could not defend their position. Here they come. They can't, they can't deal with me one-on-one, -on -one, so they gather their forces. But you still can't do nothing with Angel Snuff No. 7 because it's not me you're dealing with. You're dealing with real truth. You're dealing with common sense, logic, and rationale, and reason. It's a lot of things that I said I don't like. If you really, you really be upset if you knew what I really wanted, but it's not about me. It's about telling the truth and bringing us real truth so all humanity, black, 
people, Caucasians, Asians, everybody can benefit. So we can be better. Not just so you can be better than me, or she can be better than me. This race is better. It's about all of us. All of, if we deny this, all of us will go extinct at the rate that we are going. That's the bottom line. So I don't care how black you are, how white you think you are, whatever. If we don't solve this problem and put ourselves in a better direction, all, I don't care how rich you are, all of us will go extinct. And maybe that might be a good thing if we don't be this stupid. <laughs> but silly. Then she says that she likes my personality, but I'm a racist. That don't make any sense either. I don't care what kind of personality a, a, a hater got. I don't like, that's just like the truth saying, well, uh, uh, the, 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 the Germans, they make a good personality. Uh, uh, I still like them because they got a good personality. I hate them. But that, don't even, that don't even make any sense. It don't. Sister, you confused. I would suggest to you to sit down and just think a little bit. And stop being emotional like all of y'all are. And think for a change. Emotion hinders proper thinking. My time is out. Drop down your comments. This is Brother Tony Give Me Wrong. This was and is the Reality Temple on Earth. Peace, fam, and always. This is your brother, Tali Even Wrong, and this is the Reality Temple on Earth. All right, what we want to talk about real quick, we want to talk about the recent incident with uh, one of our more elder brothers and scholar, uh, I believe his name is Henry Louis Gates, I believe he's a prominent uh, professor at Harvard, I know that he uh, has expertise in black studies, uh, the study of uh, African-American genealogy. But recently uh, on the news, he had a run-in with the law at his own house. He was returning from China, I believe, and for some reason, he was unable to get in his, his uh, home and his sofa came to the door to try to help him get inside, and uh, neighbors were concerned, and they called the police. Once the police got there, uh, Brother Gates did identify himself as the owner of the home. He had a uh, confrontation with the police officer. The police officer, of whom happened to be Caucasian, took advantage of his position as being a police officer and arrested him. Uh, Brother Gates at his home and sent him to jail. The recent update that I heard of it is that the police and Brother Gates saw this uh, as a regrettable incident and uh, let bygones be bygones. But of course you have people like Jesse Jackson and some other brothers that uh, don't believe we should just let this go without a little bit more uh, conversation, more debate on the subject of what they call racial profiling. Now for me, I am uninterested. I am uninterested in, I'm not saying that I'm not concerned with Brother Gates or any black person who is racially profiled uh, in this nation. But the problem here is that when you sleep with a dog, you get fleas. You live in a country, you don't want to leave, you know this society does not like you. You're treated like a fifth-class citizen, but of course you pay first-class taxes. You pay first-class blood and sweat when it comes to labor and defending this nation, but you're treated as a fifth or sixth-class citizen. So 
it should not be no shock that Brother Gates or any black man that lives in a fluid neighborhood around Caucasian people, you are seen as an animal. You're still seen, as they say, uh, you're not respected. I would suggest to us that even though we don't like it, and even in some of our relationships, we don't like it, but I would suggest to us that perhaps we need to give the thought about divorce. Unlike uh, a marriage between a man and a woman, the woman choosing the man and, the wo and, and so forth, in this society, this was a forced marriage. We were, uh, and our ancestors were slaves to the people of this nation. This was a forced marriage. We should seek immediate divorce. We don't like talking about divorce. And see, we are like a woman who has had a husband, and she's never had a job. She always depends on her husband. So to speak about a divorce is a fearful thing for her. She is scared because she's not used to being on her own. But at the same time, how long is she going to take that beating? How long is she going to take the abuse? How long is she going to go along with being unloved in that household? How long, black man? How long, black woman, are we going to sit around and try to get along with a husband or this wife that does not love us, that does not care about us, continue to abuse? And then you know how it is with abuser. I get better. I get better. I'm not going to wait for you to get better. It is time that we separate and we divorce. And also, if possible, get alimony. If you do not get alimony, it doesn't make any difference. It is time for separation. So with that said, and also with this time probably cutting me short, perhaps we need to give a thought about divorce and separation from these people, from this nation, that apparently and clearly will not treat you as an equal. They will treat you as an equal when it comes to the gas chamber and the uh, lethal injection will not, will not treat you at a sense as a full-fledged equal citizen and other things that benefit. Anything that's detrimental, they will give to you. Anything that is beneficial, they will not. This is your brother, Talik Evening Ra. This is the Reality Temple on, on Earth, and I wish the best for our brother, Louis Gates. Thank you for listening, and I'll get back with you uh, later on um, sometime this week. Peace forever. Welcome to another edition. Ah, let me stretch out a little bit. Welcome to another edition of the Rowley's Temple on Earth. I'm your host, 
your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Wrong. This is another video where perhaps I might piss some people off. I might lose subscribers. Might lose viewers. But guess what? I don't give a care. I don't care. That's your prerogative. I never asked you to come here to begin with, so bye bye. But I'm going to tell you my point of view, open and honest. I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to get your money from out your pocket. So I can say what I want. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Or we can agree to disagree, however. But I will tell you on this video, there is no agree to disagree because this is how I personally feel. And you're not going to make me change my mind no matter what you say. And I'll tell you why. I grew up in the Baptist church. And later on, I was converted to Islam, the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. No matter what religion I practiced, I was true to it. See, that's what y'all don't understand. I was true to Jesus Christ. I was true to Allah. And the version of Islam that I was taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I was not looking for a reward. I wanted to serve God because I felt good doing that. I love the law that God gave us because by obeying the laws of God, it was not a burden for me. Because I know that the laws of God made me better. And if you notice, I still do the same thing. Because those laws and those things that we're taught in religion, they say given to us by God is good for us. Why would I throw away something that's good for me simply because... Oh, you know, I'm an atheist now, or I'm a realist now. I don't believe in God, so I'm going to fornicate. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to use drugs, because I don't believe in God. <laughs> Stupid. And in religion, both Bible and Quran, God is described as a loving God, and God has mercy on us. And God has compassion. And in Christian teaching, God loves us so much that He sacrificed His one and only begotten Son so that we may be saved because He died for our sins. What a Father that would do such a thing for people he knew wasn't going to change. Because if he's God, he got to know. But I guess he was willing to give these idiots the benefit of a doubt. But that's God. And y'all should be happy. Somebody got mercy on you. Somebody got compassion. Because for me personally... If God is listening to my voice, and if I'm taking a vote, and God want to know what I think, and I'm casting a vote, either we be saved or we be destroyed. I'm voting for the human family to be destroyed. All of y'all, including myself. Brother, you done flip. <laughs> you done gone crazy now, man. No, I have not. Because you didn't have these books of religion for thousands of years. We've had the teachings of Jesus for at least 500. Islam for a, oh, a few thousand. At least a thousand. I, I, I don't really uh, remember the exact birthday, birthdays of religion no more. I don't think about religion that much. 
But regardless, these religions been around a long time. And I don't care what you call your God, you ain't obeying them. You can call your God Yahweh be Yahweh. You can call your God Jesus. You can call your God Muhammad, Allah, or Buddha. Whatever your God is, apparently it's very crystal clear. God don't give a damn about your God. You just run your mouth. That's all you do. And wear pretty clothes and costume. That's what you do. Every Easter, wear your Easter bonnet and all the pretty things upon it. You act like you righteous. You pretend righteous wannabes. When I was in religion, I was real. That's why some of y'all in the church that was with me didn't understand me. Because they was fakes. I love God and those teachings. That's why a lot of people in the nation of Islam didn't really understand me. Because I'm real about this. I love Elijah Muhammad and Allah and what was given to me and I love the law I didn't fear the law and punishment wouldn't worry about being punished because I love the law but y'all weak because y'all really love evil and you like living unrighteous life you like running around about the flesh is weak how is the flesh going to be weak it's your mind. The flesh can't do nothing without the mind. The reason why I'm talking here is because the mind have dictated this is what we're going to do. The arm, the arm can't say, well, I don't want to do that today. The leg can't say, well, I don't want to sit. I don't want to sit while you talking your crap today. Whatever the mind decides it want to do. But you want to blame it on the flesh. So it has nothing to do with the flesh. It's you. Because you really love this world. You love evil. You love unrighteousness. And that's why I come to the conclusion if I'm going to vote for the same humanity or vote to destroy humanity, I will tell God, and I'm telling God in this video, if God exists, <laughs> destroy it all. Bring your fire. Bring your water. In the Bible, it says that God destroyed the, the earth by water, fire next time. Burn these suckers up. You are not worthy of your life. You're greedy. Murderers. War making. Look at the earth. Killings every day. Somebody's getting murdered. Somebody being raped. Where is your love and your peace? But all y'all got all this God stuff. Destroy it. Flood it out. Burn it up. Send an asteroid from somewhere. Turn it up. Well, that means you go along. So what? So be it. And leave nothing behind. No trace. So whatever comes after us will never, never know that this existed. Only thing you think about is whose penis you're going to mess with. What vagina you're going to lick. What drug you're going to use. What reefer you're going to smoke. Who you're going to kill because you don't like them. Y'all crazy and insane. A planet of insanity. The earth name should be changed from the earth to insanit in insanitasia or something. Something that means crazy people. Home of the crazy folks. Because that's what you become. And unfortunately, the so-called good must perish with the wicked. But how do we know? Y'all all blend in so good. Where are all the good voices? Where are all the righteous? Like Martin Luther King said, evil exists because good people do nothing. So I guess there's a whole lot of good nothing. And all these good for nothing should be destroyed along with the wicked. That's how I feel. I don't know about you. See, y'all scared to die and be punished for your and all that old stuff. 
I don't care. Because it's good. It's better for you to be destroyed than live like this and bring more children to keep this crap going on. No, bring it to an end. Because a heathen can only produce another heathen. And that's why after thousands of years, that's what you got. It was heathens then and it's heathens now. And I'm telling God, and I'm asking God, destroy it all. <laughs> Y'all don't like that, do you? Oh, well. But you know something? Y'all gonna make my dreams come true, ain't you? <laughs> Time's up. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome once again. I am the Angel Snuff Nuff 7. This is the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your brother, the host, Talik Ibn Ra. I wanted to just respond to this video called Kilo 34, the racist pedophile of YouTube. I would like to thank the maker of this video, Mr. Final Justice, for bringing up this point. I am so happy that there are so many brains and intelligent people on YouTube that cannot be Food that cannot be tricked, that think for themselves. It's a wonderful thing. And to know that I am surrounded by those type of people make me feel good. And it should make all of us who are involved in black struggle, black liberation, black nationalism, it should make us feel great that our people are slowly but surely awakening or have become awakened and now are actively doing something to express that awakening. There is no doubt that Mr. Final Justice is an awakened person. We have to do this together. I cannot do this by myself. No one, no matter how famous they may be, no matter how intelligent they think they are, cannot awaken, cannot gather our people to the point whereas we can be successful at the ultimate goal, and the ultimate goal is black independence, black love, things of that nature. I was thinking this Way in the back of my mind, after listening to some of this true racist Caucasians videos, and he had a general thing, and he only used one prime example to make his point, and that was pedophilia. What if a pedophile did this to young children? He always, this is always a central thing when he's trying to describe something and compare our struggle with such sickness. We do not advocate pedophilia, nor that which make people sick in the mind. But it is good that justice has been served because Mr. Final Justice has exposed him for the pedophile that he is. I'm going to call him a pedophile because he has yet to respond to this accusation or this allegation. And why is this? Kilo 34, you want to call me a racist liar. You want to call Mr. Final Justice a racist liar. You want to expose us, as you say. Since you love to expose things, why don't you expose yourself Respond to this brother's video and deny that you are a pedophile. I also asked this Kilo fella, I also asked him 
is he an Irish Catholic? Because I know in our conversations, he says that he was Irish. So are you an Irish Catholic? He will not tell me whether or not he is a believer in the Irish Catholic faith because the church, the Catholic church is in uh, under attack because it has covered up pedophilia. And if you are, are an uh, Irish Catholic and you are sending out these overtones of pedophilia, then they go hand in hand. He tells me that some of my subscribers have went on his side. He says since he has began to attack Angel Snuffin' Up 7, his views and his subscriptions has increased. And many of the people that used to watch me now know that I'm a racist hater. I have never in none of my videos advocate the harm of any Caucasian person. Whenever a black man stands up for the rights of black people in this nation and remind this nation who just so happened to be controlled by Caucasian people and that's not my fault, that's reality and remind you of slavery and remind you of Jim Crow Remind you of those dogs attacking our people. Remind you of the lynchings and the castrations and the rapes of black women. Then we are called reverse racist, black racism. There's no such thing as black racism. When was the last time a white man was lynched and hung and castrated by blacks solely based on his skin color? When was the white man forced into an educational system that taught him that white was inferior and black was superior. When was the last time a white man was taken out of his name of Toby and then he was forced to go by the name Kuta Kente? When was the last time a white man was placed into a black system where it was a reverse, a reverse uh, system like that of Jim Crow? That's racism. Black people are not in that power. In fact, even if we went to African nations, which are controlled by black people, as far as I know, there is no African or black or Asian or any person of color. They have not set up no system to discriminate, harass, and make white people inferior. That's what racism is. And a racist is one who takes advantage of being of the superior race and oppress and harass darker peoples. In this case, white supremacy. In fact, prior to white supremacy, there was no racism. There was division among human beings about religion. There was division of, among human beings about culture and tribe and things of that nature. But until white supremacy, there was no such thing as racism. Racism comes from out of white supremacy. Did black people originate and create white supremacy? Of course not. It was white people. And if you want to fight racism, then you need to fight the root of it because the black man is angry at you. The black man has hatred for you because of what has happened to him during the process of white supremacy. Have things changed? No, they have not changed. White people continue to call blacks Nigga, like you do, Kilo, with your pedophile ass. Is there discrimination of black people in this in this nation's law? Yes, it is. I'm a prime example of it. Black people suffer double the unemployment than whites. Why is that if we so equal? Why do the average black family earn $20,000 less than the average white family. But we are equal. There's progress. Why does the civil rights legislation, why does that expire? And you have to renew it every few years or whatever. Why is that? Because nothing has changed. The game might have changed. And you want to try to keep people dead in the mind. But again, 
Who gives a damn? Those who want to go for your sickness like your enjoying your pedophilia, more power to them. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Take your ass on. I will join on with my brother, Mr. Final Justice, and continue this work of awakening our people and bringing us self-love. Kilo 34, you have been exposed as a pedophile. Justice has been served. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Raw. I need to uh, try to make my points as quickly as possible due to time limitations. So on this busy, let us get busy. This message goes out to those who in ignorance, and it has to be ignorance, have the nerve to call Brother Tali a racist. There's no such thing or person as a black race racist. So you messed up already. Even so, let us use your definition for what a black racist is. And I will compare myself to your hero who you say is not a black racist, Martin Luther King Jr. And the reason why you have chosen Martin Luther King Jr. as your hero is because he is dead. And y'all always choose dead people because dead people tell no tale. So you can take Martin Luther King and make him whatever you want. <laughs> you like that, don't you? But when Martin Luther King was alive, black people and white folks gave Brother Martin Luther King, pure D hell. So, Brother Martin, I understand your struggle because I'm going through the same type of thing myself. May you rest in peace. Two points that they say that qualify somebody to be a black racist. Well, of course, well, actually three. You have to be black, a so-called Negro, a black American, descendant of some type of African, I guess. You must be that. You can't be a black racist without being black. So I qualify. And also, Martin, we are uh, black or Negro or, or African American, however you want to say it. The reason why I am a so called black racist, by their definition, is because I call white people devils. I hate white folks. Nowhere. I have over 800 videos. Posted on YouTube. There's nowhere where I call white people devil. Nor say that I hate white people. Where? I ask these idiots, where is the evidence? They can't say nothing. What it sounds like you don't like. It's a lot of things I don't like and it sounds like. Either you said that I said that I hated white people. Well, prove it. Even so. Who was the enemy? If Martin Luther King was here. Who would he say his enemies were? He would tell you. It's the racist white people in the South. And that's what I'm telling you. The racist Caucasians, not only in the South, not only in America, but around the world. So I guess Martin Luther King has uh, one of the qualifications to be a racist because he said that his enemies was racist white people. Oh yeah, but see, uh, uh, racism was uh, it, it was it was uh, outright in your face. He also had to deal with undercover racists. The whole country was racist. The Ku the Ku Klux Klan did not make up Jim Crow. The Ku Klux Klan didn't make up all these laws of discrimination. Y'all live in a fiction and silly world because you don't want to admit the majority of white people in America, especially America, are racist. I don't know about around the world, 
But I do know in America, because racism could not exist without a majority, that's just common sense. Then you say I'm a racist because I don't like the house Negro. I don't like what people I call dark European. Because the dark European or the house Negro, his only concern is what is good for white folks. He don't care nothing about black people. Yeah, I got a problem with that. Yeah, I don't like them. Because what about us? Here you are, a black man, just because you got yours. You got a million dollar basketball contract. You married a white woman, and you all doing whatever. But what about us? But then at the same time, what about your own people? No, I don't like them. They are an enemy to us. Why should I like them? Why should you like them? And they racist against their own people. Martin Luther King was, had a book signing and a black woman came to the table and stabbed him in the chest with a letter opener. The doctor said if he had breathed just a little bit harder, he would have been dead. A black woman, a so-called Negro. Why is that? So now Martin has his own enemies because there were a lot of black people that did not like Martin Luther King. They called him a troublemaker. But y'all don't want to bring stuff like that up. So in Martin Luther King's eyes, she would be considered a house Negro because she is content with what the white man have given us. Martin Luther King was a rebel. He was sick of being mistreated. He was sick of injustice. He wanted to be equal, an equal citizen, just like myself. So if I'm a racist, then Martin Luther King is a racist too because he had a, a, a form of a house Negro that didn't like him because he was dissatisfied with the system, but they were. They were looking out for what's best and didn't want to bother the white folks. So I have people that we got people living today, they are content, especially now, some of y'all Negroes, y'all got, y'all can get on YouTube and y'all can drive Mercedes-Benz cars and you brag about your little funky money but you don't own nothing. You wear Jordan shoes but you don't make no Jordan shoes. You don't make no computers. You're a consumer. You're not a producer. You ain't nothing but a slave. And a slave lives to benefit his master. And that's what house Negroes do. They don't care nothing about the slave in the field. Their brothers and sisters. I don't remember Martin Luther King saying anything about he loved interracial relationships or he uh, supported gay rights and all that other kind of stuff. You want to get on my case. If I'm such a black racist, Caucasian people invite me to their homes. Even to this day I get emails from white folks. If you come in my city, you come to my town, you don't have to get a hotel, please you can stop by and you can stay with me. But I'm a racist. Well, would you do it? Why wouldn't I? There are a lot of things. I'm not going to sit around and and live and, and, and sit around and, and, and just lick white folks in the butt to try to make you feel like I love them. If there are white people that's doing something that I feel comfortable with, I can socialize with you. What's wrong with that? I don't drink. I don't smoke. There's a lot of black people I can't socialize with. Because you drinkers and you smokers and you whoremongers and all these other different things. So I wouldn't stay at your ragged ass house either. So what's the big deal? I'm a black racist. I never harm no white people. I don't deny white people jobs. White people come and they fix on my car fix on the house, all kinds of stuff. I don't deny them work because they white. It's you, you sick, because you're letting a demon, you're letting a devil, somebody to take you off the path of reality, mess with your head. It ain't about hatred of nobody. But again, if I'm a racist, a black racist, so is your hero, Martin Luther King. Because he did the same thing. His enemy was white people, and he also had to deal with a form of the house Negro. 
So now what you got to say? Eh, you, you dumb. You don't, y'all need to really think before you open your mouth. That's y'all problem. You don't think. Think first. And stop acting on emotion. Y'all so emotional. Trying to protect white folks like they don't do nothing bad. They do do bad things. Then and now. You need to get that crap out your head. Jump down your comments. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. In the name of my ancestors, peace, fam, and always, welcome to another edition of the Reality Step on Earth. I'm your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend. I am the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snuffin' Up 7 here on YouTube, brother Talik Ibn Rock. I don't uh, wish to talk with uh, J.T. Riley one. This is not for him. Uh, there, it makes no sense to speak with him about anything because he is one of these type of people who regardless if they are in error you cannot speak with them you cannot try to be cordial to them they get worse because they are arrogant they are into themselves so that's what this video is about this video is to those who support ill behavior you know what this reminds me of See, y'all got this thing. When black folks seem like they defend white people, you want to call them an Uncle Tom. Sell out. Why do you want to call a black man or woman an Uncle Tom or an Aunt Ruckus or a sellout? Because you feel as though they have betrayed black folks because white people have done us so dirty. But what if another black man do us dirty? But y'all support him. You support black folks that do to us what white people do. And I will explain that in this situation, in this case, in relation to this person known as J.T. Riley One, and y'all want to uplift him. You cannot support and you cannot like me and J.T. Riley at the same time because we're two different people with two different agendas. And one is counter the other. And let me explain something to you real quick. Number one, I never Say nothing to this man to make him viciously attack me. He's not talking about, I hate Angel. No, no. I hate. What have I done? Ask him. What have I done to him? Besides, talk about his opinion on certain things. What have I done to you to deserve hate? Same thing that the white man do to us. What have we done? The white man keep talking about, I hate niggas. I hate niggas. I hate them colors. What have we done? To you white man, what have we done to any Caucasian as a people to want them to feel hatred toward us? I've never, I've never done nothing to this person. He attacked me for no reason. And since he keep attacking me for no reason, I have the right to defend myself. And that's what I have done. Took over his page and run him down into the ground. Smashed him like a great he deserved it because he shouldn't be attacking black people that have not done anything to him. And if you look at his library, you see other black men. You can't even you can't even go on his page. And if you said something that he don't like, you a pussy this and you a bitch this and cuss you out. Y'all know that and y'all support it. Y'all just as idiot as he is. So bring your ass here so I can whoop you like the parent I am. I don't play with kids. That's why you 
don't mess with me. That's why you won't come to my page with that garbage. I'll run you in the ground like a parent's supposed to do a child. He keep attacking black men, not black women. He manipulates your mind and make you think he's so lovey-dovey with you. He don't love no black people. He running a prison con game on you. In order to make himself feel good because he's been a nothing all his life. And when he come on YouTube and y'all get there clapping, go JT, go JT, he ain't saying nothing except a bunch of cuss words. Go, what way you gonna go with that? Except back to prison. Staying in the ghetto. Let me make these points. He's arrogant. Listen to his videos. The only thing he talks about is self. I'm the second coming of Tupac. I'm the smartest. I'm the greatest. He's not saying we as a people are the greatest. We are the smartest. He said I am. Follow me. I'm the leader. If y'all follow me, y'all, this is what will happen. Y'all into that? It's all about him. Buy my books. What you wanna what do you wanna sell you books for? Because he thinks that you are an idiot. So far, you proven that you're not because y'all not buying his idiot. I mean, <laughs> y'all not buying his books. Because if you was buying his books, he would not take them off the market. If I'm selling watches and this watch is selling, I would not take the watch off the market. Making me money. The reason why he had to shut his books down because y'all not buying them. That's common sense. And since he loved to make videos, if he make the video, if you sell him so many books, let us see the receipts. You're not selling nothing. And see, y'all think too, because there's nothing, he's nothing but entertainment. Black liberation, black power, this black struggle is not entertainment. Going to jail, getting your butt whooped, getting maced, all that kind of stuff is not entertainment. Ask the people who it happened to. I was locked up. There was nothing funny at no time about it. I learned how to deal with it. Ain't nothing funny about being locked up. Nothing. He's a plagiarist. He doesn't bring you nothing new. He keeps spouting all these things. Talking about he was born of a black god. That's not nothing new. That's the teachings that you can get from the nation of Islam. That's the teaching that you can get from the Hebrew Israelites or the Moors. They teach that. They taught that. But he pretend he don't like them. He got his own thing. But every time you hear him talk, all that he's doing is copying and saying the same thing that you heard from the nation of Islam, the Moors Science Temple, and the Hebrew Israelites, and anybody else out there. He's not bringing you nothing new. He's new. He attaches it. The reason why, the reason why he is concentrating on black youth, because with all due respect, he know y'all ain't very smart. You don't know that you have no life experience. You ain't put to pick up no book. So you are mesmerized by J.T. Riley because of his cuss words. Yes, it is true that he may tell you to try to stay out of jail and and all that kind of good stuff. You don't know that by now. You know that it's against the law to sell drugs. It's bad being in a gang. That it ain't cool going to prison. You need JT to cut and smile and skin and grin in your face to let you know that that ain't cool. What is he really telling you? No, you just like him because he's a clown. He's a clown. He's a clown. That's what you like about him. Black liberation. Black struggle. Dr. Martin Luther King did not die to be a clown for McDonald's. Malcolm X was not assassinated and shot to be looked upon as a Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. He wasn't here to be no entertainer for us. That was serious business and I'll take it serious. Y'all don't even know nothing about the civil rights movement. You don't even really know nothing about these things. He's not teaching you these things either. Then the main thing that he gets so upset about is this cussing. I can talk the way I want to talk. Bitch, mother, and all that crazy stuff. 
You know something? Men that don't think homosexual or have no homosexual tendency, they don't talk about screwing a man and homosexual stuff. I don't give a damn how angry I get at you. I'm not going to talk about homosexual things with you. But J.T. Ryan talks about men messing with men very easily. Ask hey, J.T. why you talk about men like that? Now you don't like men. You attack black men all the time. But then you turn around and you want to give as example homosexual activity. You never hear me speak and talk about nothing like that because the thought don't even come in my mind. Whether I like you or not. But this person seems to like homosexual activity. Why is that? Then, also at the same time, he said he was, he was raised around that. A lesbian. And gay people. Is that what you want? Y'all off into that kind of... I have nothing against homosexual people. But I don't talk about that act. Talk about... Sucking my dent and that and that and that. That's why do you talk like that? But you got so much intelligence. You know so much. The main thing that he that kicked that kicked all of this off is because I started teaching against profanity, profane words. Profanity is the ignorant mind trying to express itself. Say what you mean, mean what you say. And if you look at J.T. Riley's comments, when he's trying to, I, see, I invited him to a, to an I invited him to an intellectual debate. What did he bring me? Nothing to debate with. And a mother this, and a cuss you this, and a kiss my ass, and you a bitch, ah, nigga. Y'all gonna have y'all gonna support a person? Who market profanity? These words was made up, came from racist, illiterate Caucasian slave masters. That's where bitch, pussy, all that dick, excuse my language. That's where all that stuff come from. Illiterates, ignorant white people, and a lot of that was used against the slave. So here's the man calling us these things with a smile on his face about how he loves you, calling you a nigga and a pussy and all your other crazy stuff. And y'all like it? Something's wrong with you. Not him. He threw. He's a through piece. But something is wrong with you if you sit around here and you're going to press like on his video. So in other words, you like ignorance. He says that he represents the new. What is new about 300 year old racist words, profane words? What's new about that? What's new about copying teachings from Islam, teachings from the Morris Science Temple, teachings from the Hebrew Israelites? What's so new? What is this dude doing that's so new? What he is doing is poking up himself, using you. And I guess you like it. Because he's entertainment for you. He's standing and grinning and showing them old raggedy gold teeth and them old dress he probably ain't washed in who knows when. Y'all get a kick out of that. When you should begin trying to get away from those things. Those things that make us look like a clown. Those things that make us look ignorant. You are better than that black man. You are better than that young black woman. Get some real knowledge, understanding and wisdom. You're not getting it from that source. And most of all, he has low character. There's nothing wrong with going to a person and saying, look, let's squash this beef, man. You know, we, we mature. Let's, let's do better than that. You know, we might not be able to get along, but, you know, you go your way, I go my way. Let's cool, you know, for the benefit of us as a people. What's wrong with trying to squash things with your brother or your sister? This fool thinks there's something wrong with it because I'm tough. That's what y'all like, then y'all go for it. But if you come, if you come on my page or anywhere around me, then you're going to be made like an idiot and the clown that like he's looking like. 
He's trying to pretend like nothing has happened and he don't hurt. But he hurts. Because he thought, he thought, he thought too much of himself. This is your brother Tony Giver. Right, jot down in your comments. This was and is the Rallies Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace, love, and always, welcome, welcome. Brother, give me a hug. Give me a hug now. Ah, uh, yeah. Sister, you too, come on. Let's give each other hugs. Yes. Peace, love, and always, welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth. I am your host. I am known as the... Uh, Mighty, 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 Angus Love Number Seven, the host of this internet ministry, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Our time is very short, so on this busy, let me get busy. All right? <laughs> okay. Now, let me first begin by saying the subject of this video, of course, is a comment that has been reported of something from our brother, Sarah Sutton said. Many of you view me as a person who perhaps uh, may be jealous of Sarah Sutton City, hate Sarah Sutton City, and that is not true. Brother Sarah Sutton City is respected in this house. So that's not the case. However, as human beings, we are subject to flaw. We are subject to error. And I don't care how brotherly we are to one another. If I am going in a path that is detrimental to us as a people, then we need to be able to pull each other's coattail and say, hey, I don't think that's a good thing to say. I don't think that's a good thing to do. If we are so arrogant that we cannot listen to our brothers and sisters, then we have a problem. That individual has a serious problem. And when we see somebody behave that way, then we really need to question them instead of getting hooked up on this emotion thing because somebody is eloquent in their speech, because somebody is articulate, because somebody is charismatic, we fall into that trap. And that trap can send you to an early grave. And history has proven this. Either it sends you to an early physical grave or sends you to an early spiritual or mental grave. So let me put my little two cents in on this little controversy about what Sarah Sutton said, he, the statement that he made. And I was watching a video and it was him and coming out of his own mouth, he was talking to the audience and he was telling the audience that brothers have to do what they have to do. If you have to sell drugs to survive, then you got to do what you got to do. Some of us might die or whatever in the process or whatever. But that's just, brothers got to do what they have to do to survive. He was there doing the same thing at one time. I hope that he will release the full version of the video of his talk on his channel so that we all can hear and see for ourselves and, and plus we can see the 
whole context. I hate, I don't like sound bites. Because sound bites can make you think and believe anything other than what the person actually was trying to get across. But let us say, for instance, if Brother Sarah Sukhansetti was indeed telling the audience, do what you got to do. Since they can't, since nobody won't give you no job, if you have to sell drugs, then do it. That is the wrong message for our brothers and sisters. That's the wrong message. Well, you got to feed the babies. You got to do what you got to do to survive. So, in other words, in order for you to survive, you're going to sell drugs to our people to continue the poisoning of our, the masses of our people in our community to continue to help make us sick so that you can survive as an individual. Because you got babies to feed. Come on now. Let's, we're going to talk about that. Let's begin from, let's take this from the beginning. These babies that you need to feed, how were they produced? Were they produced by a man and woman in love and are married? Which I don't care, I mean, whether you're married or not, but they are in a committed relationship. First of all, many of these babies in our community come to, into existence because of one night stand, because of screwing around, playing games with love. However, what, the, what religious circles would say would call immoral behavior. So here we have many of our babies, because most of these babies are being raised, as you know, by single women. These babies are produced by immoral behaviors. Then you have a mother and a father that can barely take care of themselves. If you can't take care of yourself, if you have no education, you have no job skills, why the hell are you making babies? Because if you can't hardly take care of yourself, why would you bring babies in the world and make them suffer? Because you know damn well you can't do nothing. So I got to go out of the street and sell some drugs and poison my people because I got this baby that I could have bought a three dollar condom that would never have been created in the first place because I can't take care of myself why would I bring this life into the world why don't why didn't you why don't you address that we need to stop making these babies that we can't take care of because we can't take care of ourselves you have the right to reproduce that's a lovely thing. It's nice to have babies and children. But also at the same time, when you bring that life into the world, then you should know that you're capable of taking care of that child because that child deserves the best. But you can't take care of yourself. Why are you bringing these babies in the world? So, these babies that you need to feed were brought into existence by immoral behavior. So, you going to suggest, Sarah Susan said, are, are you really suggesting to our brothers and our sisters that they continue immoral behaviors by turning to breaking the law, by selling illegal drugs, stealing, or whatever you got to do to survive? So, what they say, you're fighting fire with fire. Immoral behaviors brought these poor babies into existence. And now you're going to find another type of fire to fight the fire that you willingly didn't have to. You did it to yourself. Brought these babies into existence. You got to feed the babies. As adult people, as adult people, we cannot depend on others. Well, since they don't give us any job, they don't have to do a damn thing for you. You have to look out for yourself. With all your speech, why are we waiting on somebody to create jobs for us when we should be creating jobs for ourselves? There are a lot of brothers and sisters in the community that have money that could, that's willing to help us if we went to them. Are you going and asking our brothers and sisters to help their own community? Are you setting up programs to give our brothers who can't read, teach them how to read, teach them how to write, give them job skills? No. Go out in the street and sell some drugs. So, you're going to say, do what you got to do. So, there's a consequence. So, first.
first of all, you're going to help the oppressor and all our enemies because we don't make the cocaine. We don't make, we don't bring the marijuana. We don't, we're not, we're not the, we're not the, we're, not the, we're only the distributors. We're not the ones behind the drug cartels. So we're going to help make them rich. And in the process, when the oppressor catches up with us, he'll be happy to throw us in his prison and incarcerate us. So you're talking about doing what you have to do because of, of the babies. But when that black man or even the mother of the child go to jail for, for uh, 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 dealing drugs or stealing or whatever immoral behavior they have to do to survive, now you left the baby orphan. Well, orphan comes when the, when the mother and the father is deceased, which can happen because you can be, so you, cause you can be in a shootout with the police. You can be in a shootout with the other drug dealer. And the parents get killed. So now, who going to take care of these babies that need to be fed? The white man would do it. Then the white man would raise these children. And they would hate their brothers and sisters. They would hate the black community because of what has happened. Especially when they hear your voice. You gave their parents this tacky advice. You got to do what you got to do. Doing what you got to do don't mean... That you're going to put yourself in a position so that the oppressor can continue to justify incarceration or other harassment. If a baby that you need to feed ends up fatherless or motherless, is Sarah Susan Sandy going to take care of that child? I guess you got an orphanage that you're planning on opening up. Because that's the bottom line, that's the result. I don't understand your thinking. So it is not about hatred or jealousy or envy of Sarah Susan City. Your strategy, what you're talking about is messed up. You're talking about voluntary destruction. We're going to help. We're going to help the oppressor get rid of us. So when the world Look at the white man come down on these savages. The world said, good riddance is the bad rubbish. We are smarter than that. We are better than that. That's my problem. You're dealing with an enemy that has been raised to the point he's a god. He's a god. You, you are going from city to city making folks angry and emotional. But there's no substance. You have no plan. I always ask these people, what is your plan? They have no plan. Don't they talk about pick up a gun, kill the cracker, kill the devil. What is your plan? You have none. That's why you can tell the brothers and sisters, you do what you got to do. You, they got to do what they got to do because you have nothing to offer them except emotional tense. And emotional tense when you get emotional, when you get angry, you don't think clearly. And that's what's wrong with us. We are angry and emotional, but we're not thinking very clear. Just like I heard a sister say, we are the original man. We are the original people. We taught the white man math. We taught him science. We taught him about perfume. We taught him how to take a bath. So if that's who we are, then we should be smart enough. To, 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 I guess you would say, make him do what we feel we want him to do. Become his teacher again. But we can't teach nobody hollering and screaming, talking about killing somebody, because there's no benefit. And what's the sense of killing the white man when well, you still got the white man in your head? He is there. I hear it every day. Because your idea of success and rulership is the same way like he thinks. Except the only thing you did was flip the script. Instead of it being Caucasian, now you want to make it black. Think about it. Let's talk about it. Jump down your comments. This is your brother Talik even Rock. Think for ourselves, people. Stop believing the hype. This was and is.
Reality's Temple on Earth. Till next. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome. Welcome, welcome to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth. I am the Angus Snubbin' Up 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Ra. You have to excuse me for looking a little sweaty, because uh, it is hot out here. And uh, I always take my camera with me, because whenever I get a break, I just love talking to my audience. I love talking to y'all. I like making videos on YouTube. I'm not going to lie. Now, some of these people, oh, you, you, you ain't got nothing else to do and blah, 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 blah. It only takes 10 minutes to make a video. And, yeah, I like it. I like it because I have a lot to say. You probably don't have a lot to say. You have nothing to offer. But I got a lot to say. I got a lot on my mind. Because I have a connection to the creation and the creation, when you look in the sky, that's the creation, that's limitless. So if I reflect the creation, and I have a brain that comes up out of that, then I should be limitless too. I should be void. I should never be empty. I should always be bringing something. That's me. I don't know about you, just because you run out of stuff and don't know what to talk about, that's, yo, y'all really, <laughs> folks on YouTube, <laughs> but I want to talk to my sisters, and uh, I just don't understand, see, I was raised by women, and I'm going to always stand for women. And some of these people talk about, well, a, a, a woman can't raise a man. Can't. That's a lie. That's a lie because any type of manhood that I am, whatever I am, it was because of a woman. And apparently, and in fact, it was women. It was women that protected me. It was women that nurtured me. It was women that guided me toward manhood. I had to figure the rest out, but they got me there. They pointed me in the right direction. So she don't, she can't raise a male and can't really raise a man for say because she can't, she can't teach a man what she's not, but she can get you close as a mug. So I don't want to hear that crap. A woman can't raise a man. That's a bunch of baloney. And y'all sisters, y'all females, no matter what you are, Caucasian or Asian or Native American, whatever you are, don't never let nobody tell you you can't raise your sons and they grow up to be strong men. It's a lie and it's false. Chances are it's a man telling you that. And that's my, and that's the subject that I want to talk about. You belong to these religious belief systems. And you listen to political systems. And you listen to society that is, has been dominated by men. And the male always desires to create things so that those who have a penis have an advantage over you. Even though he's not worthy. He's proven himself in history to be an incompetent male. Now listen to me. When I was in the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan for a few seconds tried to give women their props. And instead of the, instead of the fruit of Islam being his security force around him, he allowed the MGT, the women of the Nation of Islam, to secure him for a second. But see, that didn't even last long. And I knew it wasn't going to last long because religion is biased against the woman. You're nothing but somebody to breed with, somebody to raise children with. You're not seen as a higher form. And you go for it. You don't see nothing better for yourself. You don't see yourself really as a goddess. 
you see the male as a goddess, but you second to him. You don't really see yourself as an equal. In Islam, the women, I'm just fine with putting a mask over my face and running around in a garbage sack because, because I want to be modest and you like that because you want to be faithful to your religion and your religion is dominated by men, ruled by men. So of course, now why should you, women, females, why you got to dress all modestly and cover your face because these men can't control themselves. But the men don't have to do nothing. They don't have to cover them their face. They don't, they don't have to go through all that drama. Only for you. Because the men control the religion. The men who wrote the religion, not God. Allah ain't wrote nothing. Jesus have not wrote nothing here. All this is, all this is designed and made by men and males. But y'all give y'all money. Everything else is equal. You give your money, your time, and you work hard. All that is equal. When it comes to the prophets of God, when you talk about prophets, there are female prophets, but they don't have nothing worthy of talking about. It's always about what Moses said. Always about what Jesus said. Always about what Noah said. Always about what Peter said. Women don't have nothing to offer. How can you like that? Because you've been tricked and you've been deceived. You, the only difference between you and a man, that the man has a penis and you have a vagina, and the penis came from out of the vagina. The penis is nothing but a primitive form of vagina. It's an it's an offshoot of the female. You don't give yourself credit. And so since they say that. Oh yeah, before I forget, in Christian teachings, of course, you know Eve is the troublemaker. She's not a full human being. She's the rib of a man. That's all y'all is in Christianity. You're not even a full human being. You're made out of some sucker's rib. An idiot sucker that caused the downfall of humanity. And then he don't take responsibility like he should. He blame you because y'all ate ate some fruit and got tricked by a snake. Y'all that dumb. Women run from snakes. Women don't like little creatures like that. What, what woman you know of like creatures? Worms and snakes and little ickety ickety creatures. Y'all are into that. Men play with snakes. Then after the man play with the snakes, y'all might get brave enough. Wow, that's, that creature's not as Dangerous as I thought. Then y'all might play with snakes. Y'all know women is squeamish. You don't like playing with stuff like that. In the nation of Islam, we was taught that 75% of the problem of our, of our sojourn in America is with the black woman. Because the black woman is the teacher, the first teacher of the babies and all this. Nonsense. It's nonsense. The woman is the first teacher because she she gave us the baby but the man can be there he can teach just as well as the woman can but you put all of the burden the, the woman is the first teacher so if the babies go bad it's the woman's fault what about the men see the men never get no blame it's all 75 percent of the problem is on the woman and so the men don't have to do a damn thing. But see, if the men were men like they're supposed to, then the woman could be stronger. Things would be better. It's the men who really got the problem. They don't spend time with the children. They don't love the woman like they should. But nobody wants to bring no subject up. It's all about the women. All about the women. Sisters, rethink you re reevaluate your religious belief system, how you look at religion. Do you, are you, do you think God really wants you to be number two? This is not no equal relationship. And then look at men in charge. They are the dominant force. Look at look at look at look at your condition since men been in charge. Nothing but fighting, arguing, killing, murder. Because they can't produce life. See, if you was in charge, women, females, 
since you bring into life and you care about life, then you have a different outlook on things. But see, these males, macho. Aren't they anything about is solving problems with a gun and killing and fighting and fussing? Because they got to show that they macho and they steal a bunch of sissies. They still ain't incompetent. They ain't got it going on. My time is out. Rethink your position on your religious beliefs. Don't be number two. Don't walk behind him. You just as great as any man, if not better. In fact, really, you closer to the God than he ever will be. You are the womb. You are the connection to the universe, not the male. He's your helpmate, not vice versa. Jot down your comments. Peace out, y'all. Time is up. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother, Administer Talik IBNRAD.